we begin with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who has a message for U.S. chief executives. Stay out of politics. Well, unless it's a donation. His message comes in response to the growing corporate backlash against the new voting law in Georgia. Bloomberg Opinion senior columnist Tim O'Brien joins me now with more. Hey, Tim, great to have you on with us. This is a major shift for the uh, Senate GOP leader who has long encouraged corporate political activity in the form of donations. What do you make of it? Well, I don't know that it's an authentic major shift yet, Tim. I think I think the interesting thing to me is how are both sides of this particular standoff or disagreement going to actually um, handle this? For, for corporations like Delta and Coca-Cola in, in Georgia, um, voicing their concerns about democracy, which we are in a, a democratic country, so I don't actually think of this as a cultural issue. I actually think of it as hmm. core values for how the country functions. But what are they going to do beyond just taking a stand on this? Is, is, is are, are Coke and Delta going to move their headquarters? I doubt it. Right. So I, I think it's important for them to set standards around moral and social issues that people care about, which is important in terms of mainstreaming these things and having public consensus. But in terms of like, how do they really flex their muscle and introduce pain? They're not going to move their headquarters. The second thing they can do, obviously, is turn off the money spigot to – uh, GOP candidates, if they choose. Uh, they've wavered on that, actually, right? We After January 6th, we saw corporations saying, we are not going to give any money to people who support this. And then they kind of came back away from that a little bit. On the GOP side of this, if Mitch McConnell is so turned off by this, what, what is the muscle they have to make themselves feared by corporations? Um, Regulation would be the first thing they could do. They could they could introduce hostile regulations, which I don't think any GOP politician is going to do. And secondly, they don't have their hands on the levers of those powers right now. The Democrats do. So what can the GOP really do here? And and so I think, uh, you know, and and then and then on top of it, the GOP has said we're in favor now of small dollar donations. We're looking to grassroots donors. We find that to be a fruitful way to finance ourselves going forward. We don't need corporate money. I, I don't think that's true either, but they're sort of saying that. And so long term, is this going to really change the GOP's relationship to corporate America or corporate America's relationship to the GOP? I don't think so. Um, I think it is another moment in culture wars, and it's the GOP spotlighting things around race, or uh, democracy or uh, tolerance um, that they think plays well to their political base. But I don't know that it's about any fundamental change in the relationship. Yeah, it, it, I have yet to see any sort of big example uh, apart from what happened in North Carolina a few years ago when it came to companies deciding not to hold conferences there, for example, uh, because of the, the bathroom bill. That was uh, that was slated there, but yeah, I don't see I don't see much happening in well, the way. Well, and, and interestingly too, in that vein, I yeah. think um, sports leagues, right, like yeah. the NCAA or the MLB. Now, the reason I think actually they can their leverage comes out of the fact that they can say we won't have a tournament or a competition in your state because they're actually not, you know, the employees as it were, or the stakeholders as it were in in the in the athletic leagues broadly defined are the athletes and the teams themselves, and those teams are mobile. Uh, the, you know, the, the NCAA and MLB aren't headquartered in Atlanta, like Delta and Coke. And they can move their tournaments around. So for them, it, it, it's, a, it's a relatively, it's a lighter lift to say, we won't do our business in your state. Yeah, it's um, pretty hard for Delta to move headquarters and, and hubs. And as you mentioned, Coca-Cola to to move a, a headquarters for the company, they can't just pick up and do that. Right, but but the sports leagues can, and that shows you. And I think that's why the GOP jumped on that so quickly. Why you had people, uh, uh, you know, smearing at Major League Baseball um, uh, for you know what it chose to do in Georgia. Um, Tim, where do you think uh, where do you think customers come into this? Because. It, do you, I, you know, you have Republicans railing against Coca-Cola, for example, uh, but does this actually get to, you know, something beyond the beltway and beyond political Twitter 
and, and go to somebody who's thinking twice about drinking that Coke or even knowing that the beverage that they're drinking is, is owned by Coca-Cola? So we've been here before with Coke. Remember their famous advertisements in the early 70s in the midst of sort of the, um, uh, uh, the cultural politics of, of, of the late 60s and early 70s? You know, I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Coke did these sort of kumbaya ads. It never changed its product. It was still selling sugar water. Um, but it used, it, it tried to align itself with, with what it saw as the cultural mores of that moment. I think this is another another version of this. I think they should be lauded for it because I do think it goes, it, it, it is about taking a stand around core public values in the United States that should be nonpartisan. I think the other thing, um, you know, to think about in all of this is these companies have, I guess, you know, three, say three stakeholders. They have their investors, they have their employees, and they have their customers. And there's a lot of things companies may not be clued into, but the most well-run companies know each of those stakeholders intimately. And Coke and Delta would not be doing this if they didn't think their employees, their investors, and their customers all wanted it. So do you think there's a chance that Republicans are abandoned by corporations? There has been this close aligning, Tim, in the past decades about Republicans being closely aligned with corporations and, and vice versa from a money perspective and from a regulatory perspective. Well, at the same time, you have Democrats right now talking about raising taxes on corporations. Do you see this political alignment changing at all? I do. And, and I think that, you know, Jamie Dimon's letter this morning is, is, is sort of a seminal moment in that. Hmm. Uh, the CEO of J.P. Morgan um, he has, he has cut out in favor. He's not, he's not been uh, there on the regulatory side 100%, but certainly on uh, social equity and regulate and, and, and corporate taxation. He has, he has called for revisiting some of these things. And I think historically, as you noted, Tim, the reason the GOP and corporate America have lined up has largely been around lower tax rates and deregulation. The question we look at now in a world in which the Chinese economy is, in, is, is surging and competitive with us is, does this sort of doctrinaire approach to regulation and taxes actually help in making American companies more competitive at home and abroad? I think that's getting revisited, and, and you see that through this infrastructure bill. I think these shibboleths of what makes the American economy strong and American companies competitive is going through a healthy revisit right now. And I think some companies are saying, you know what, the Democrats are thinking through this in a more constructive and clear-headed way that's not as poisonous as the Republicans right now. Bloomberg's Tim O'Brien. Hey, Tim, it is always great when you join us on Quick Take. Thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.